please welcome Secretary of the United States Department of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack, and Chef Rob Kaneen, Chef Crystal Wapapa, Chef Joe Robbins, Chef Francisco Alegria, and Chef Leah Husby. Well, good morning, everyone. It is uh, great to be with all of you again. And I've brought a few friends who are uh, going to be introduced in just a few minutes. Excited about today uh, because we have a series of announcements which uh, I think reflect a continued commitment uh, to Indian country at USDA. Very excited about the opportunity that we announced today in conjunction with the House and Senate Committees of Jurisdiction on the establishment of the USDA Tribal Advisory Council and Committee. Uh, we believe this advisory council will give us an opportunity to even strengthen our nation-to-nation -nation relationship, acknowledging and respecting the knowledge and wisdom that can be gained uh, from this opportunity to visit with members of various tribes about areas of interest to tribes. And one of the areas that we know is of significance is the way in which our forests are maintained and managed. Last year at this conference, we committed to entering into at least 60 co-stewardship agreements with tribes across the country for the management of our forests. And candidly, when I made that announcement, I was concerned that we might have overcommitted. But it turns out that's not the case. As co-chair of the White House Council on Climate Change, Homelands and Treaties Committee, I'm really pleased to announce that we significantly surpassed that 60 threshold with 120 new co-stewardship agreements with the USDA and tribes. One of the examples uh, is the Clint Attic tribe uh, in the Tongass National Forest in Alaska. We've entered into a co-stewardship agreement with the Mendenhall, Mendenhall Glacier Recreation Area with that tribe, and I want to thank President Peterson, who I know may be watching this uh, in Alaska, as well as uh, First Vice President Peta, who is here today, for their work in making this new opportunity happen. I also know that one of the things that's important uh, for, for tribes is an understanding of the role that we can play in working to expand economic opportunity and to expand opportunities for food sovereignty. To be able to do that, you have to be able to process the indigenous animals that are harvested and the meat that is important and necessary for subsistence. That's why we established the uh, Indigenous Animals Harvesting and Meat Processing Grant Program, which is really designed to advance food sovereignty and economic opportunity. We're beginning the process of making announcements today. In fact, we're announcing four grants uh, in an effort to begin the process, and we expect that we'll be announcing significantly greater numbers in the near future. In Montana, Fort Peck is gonna receive resources to be able to expand their cold storage capacity for bison, elk, deer, antelope, and pheasant. Uh, in the Oregon-California border, the uh, Talawa, Daini tribe is receiving resources for expanding their processing capacity to be able to process fish, deer, elk, and salmon. In Alaska, uh, the Alutik uh, tribe of Old Harbor is receiving resources for modernizing their facility where they use traditional methods uh, to process game, fish, and bison. And St. Paul Island is also going to have the opportunity to provide resources uh, for their processing op operation uh, for reindeer. So this is the beginning of uh, providing resources to expand processing and storage capacity so that indigenous foods can be more readily available and utilized and jobs can be created in Indian country. We also recognize, uh, especially in Alaska, the issue of subsistence is something that is incredibly important and near and dear. Uh, uh, in uh, and two tribes. Uh, we want to work to ensure that the young people uh, also understand and appreciate the role that subsistence plays and how they might best be able to, uh, to continue to protect their subsistence rights, uh, especially in Alaska. 
For that reason, uh, we're entering and announcing today uh, into an arrangement with the Sitka Conservation Society to develop a curriculum for young people so that they can better understand what those rights are uh, and better be able to utilize them relative to the Federal Subsistence Board. And we're excited about that cooperative opportunity uh, to join together to ensure that young people fully understand and appreciate the rights that they have. Uh, and speaking of subsistence and speaking of uh, food sovereignty, we're excited about launching uh, the first ever bison purchase pilot program for our food distribution program. Uh, we know and appreciate how important it is to make sure that uh, bison is available as part of the food offerings. So we're working uh, with four uh, pilots, uh, the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, the Ron Brown Otter Buffalo Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, the Lower uh, Bruel Sioux, uh, Sioux Tribe, and the Dakota Pure Bison Rosebud uh, uh, on the Sioux Reservation. Uh, we'll be working with the USDA uh, to establish this pilot. We'll learn lessons from it and hope to be able to learn from it how to expand that opportunity in the future. So this is an exciting new opportunity for, uh, in essence, a public-private partnership uh, in which we can build access uh, to indigenous foods. Uh, as, speaking of, uh, of public-private partnerships, we're also uh, launching today a new uh, public-private partnership, uh, which is really focused on uh, ensuring th that we continue to work uh, with reference to, to bison in particular. Uh, we're joining forces with the Intertribal Buffalo Council, the Native Americans in uh, Philanthropy, the Nature Conservancy, and the World Wildlife Fund uh, bison, for bison conservation. Opportunity for us uh, to work together uh, in this area. And finally, uh, we are really excited about the collaboration that we have and will continue to have with the North American Traditional Indigenous Food System effort. Uh, I'm accompanied uh, today by a, a series of chef, chefs who will be introduced in just a few minutes. But we're working hard, uh, and they've work, been working very hard over the course of the last several days uh, with SIPI to basically produce uh, amazing box lunches. Now, I will tell you, folks, uh, when you have meetings like this, and you all have been part of these conventions, and you get those box lunches, and you kind of ask yourself, where does that food come from? Uh, and you're not really excited about eating it. But today and tomorrow, that is not going to be the case. Uh, today and tomorrow, you're going to see an amazing array uh, of, uh, of presentations that uh, are delicious uh, and have been produced with love and affection uh, by these chefs and by folks who have been working with them. So it's uh, my honor to uh, introduce Chef Rob, who's going to introduce his colleagues, and to thank him and, and all of these uh, chefs for the amazing work that you've done uh, in uh, preparing uh, box lunches that are really worthy uh, of this audience. So, Chef, Chef Rob, you're... <clears throat> you didn't have to use those glasses to produce the food, did you? No, no, okay. luckily not. Are we, are we live? Okay. Um, I just want to say, uh, hello, and thank you for the kind introduction, Mr. Secretary. Uh, I also want to, to introduce my fellow chefs, Crystal Wapapa of the Kickapoo, Sac, and Fox tribes. <laughs> Francisco Alegria uh, and Leo Husby from the Menominee tribe. And Joe Robbins from the Penobscot tribe. And I am Rob Kinneen. Uh, I'm Clinkett from Alaska. So uh, powerful words, words today. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, an additional thank you to Chef Leonard Bailey of the Tribal College Culinary, and, oh, I'm sorry, and the, and the Tribal College Culinary Students from the SIPI, or Southwestern Indian Polytechnic Institute, uh, for helping us execute the food for the summit. Uh, I am the Outreach Director of Natives, North American Traditional Indigenous Food Systems. Um, our mission is to promote indigenous foodways and facilitate indigenous food access. We're proud to partner with the USDA on these indigenous food sovereignty efforts. Um, they include education, uh, cooking videos, and recipes to introduce more people to indigenous foods. This week, we are honored to create the menus that prepare the meals for the White House Tribal Nations Summit. Uh, the menus have highlighted the, um, the variety of indigenous foods from tribal producers. 
Um, also, if you also attended the Tribal Nations reception last night, we prepared uh, the seven appetizers for that as well. So I uh, hope you made it. If not, you missed out. Uh, today we have a smoked salmon donated by the Cowlitz Indian Tribe on a seaweed salad with ingredients from Sea Alaska's uh, Barnacle Seafoods. Or we have a stuffed turkey featuring Red Lake Nation wild rice. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a smoked fish soup with Oneida white corn. Or a chili with buffalo from Cheyenne River Sioux and tapari beans from Ramona Farms. All right, so thank you so much. Chef, thank you very, very much, and uh, certainly encourage you all to enjoy those meals and understand that uh, this is part of our effort to, to begin to expand significantly our uh, initiative focused on food sovereignty. Uh, we look forward to uh, a compelling report at next year's uh, summit, so thank you all.